going on, folks? Welcome to the Tennessee Titans Weekly Podcast. I'm your host and your favorite Tennessee Titans analyst, Lorenzo the Hall Hawkins. Here to bring you love from Nashville and also some tears from Nashville as we lost big time to the Baltimore Ravens. If you saw the game, which I was there, the game was awful, terrible, awful. So, in my opinion, I want to break down as the, the three keys that I thought from the last show that I had as to what we could do to win, and we didn't do really anything. One was turnovers, which we didn't have. We weren't even on offense long enough. Joe Flacco getting hit. His, his jersey is as clean as his jersey I got on. I just watched his jersey. And then running the ball with Derrick Henry, who only had 20-some yards rushing. So, again, two out of the three that I talked about, we did not do. That's why we lost the game. Awful, awful, awful. Pitiful performance by the Titans, as you all know. And you would think we would have a little bit of an inside scoop of Dean Pease being our defensive coordinator. He was their defensive coordinator just last season. I guess Wink is a much better defensive coordinator. That's another story. All right, so keys to the loss. Our offensive line, 11 sacks. That's unacceptable. Taylor Lewan looked like me out there blocking, and I'm 210 pounds, right? Jay Conklin looked terrible out there. The interior of the offensive line, Klein, Spain, terrible. Um, also on offense, not making adjustments in the second half. The entire time we're running the same offensive series. We didn't have trips or anything. We didn't change the formations at all. When we played Philadelphia, there was a lot of times we had trips on one side, the next play trips on the other side where we can run crossing routes because our receivers aren't good enough to beat press coverage. And as you see, we did not do well at all. As you can see from a receiver standpoint, Tajay Sharp led us in receiving two catches for 23 yards. Corey Davis had one catch for 24 yards. Those are some bum on the street numbers that can go on the field and do that right now. That's a 70-year-old grandmother walking across the street who can do that right now. So when you look at that, again, we didn't make adjustments. Next, Malcolm Butler. Malcolm right now is playing corner like a linebacker, okay? He's standing up tall. He's not moving quickly. He's being slew-footed. He knows he has to play better. Does he play hard? Absolutely. Does he tackle? Absolutely. But he does know right now from a coverage standpoint, he's not doing a good job, and he has to do better than that. Next is Marcus Mariota. So on average, when I looked at the tape, on average, it took him five or six seconds to throw the football on every throw. That's unacceptable. Now, again, I know the coverage was there. I know they brought, uh, brought the blitz. I mean, it was like nine people coming every play. But Marcus Mariota has to get the ball out of his hands, at least throw it out of bounds, get out of the box. Joe Flacco did that, right? So Marcus Mariota didn't do it at all. I don't know if he doesn't trust his receivers or his awareness is not there, but Mariota's got to take some blame here for those that don't think he should. Even though his quarterback is weird, his quarterback rating was at 90 because he was 11 for 15. He had no interceptions, so those numbers could be kind of skewed. But overall, he could play a better game as well. And last is the run game. Hey, Derrick Henry, where you at, bro? Deion Lewis, where y'all on hold? Offensive line, where y'all at? I don't see you nowhere. Y'all guys can't block. All right, so thanks to this game against the Baltimore Ravens, the Ravens are now rated number one overall in overall defense. Thanks to our putrid offense, we now have the Baltimore Ravens looking like the Ray Lewis and Ed Reed era. And when Terrell Suggs was a rookie, with Chris McCallis and those guys out there, that's on us. We look bad, we look terrible. In practice, they should be arguing with each other. Does Baltimore have a good defense? They do. No, no lie about that, right? Top five in the league the past several weeks. But now they're number one because of us. So that's unacceptable. So, because uh, we have Jadarius Smith, a linebacker, punishing offensive tackles and getting three sacks. That's, that's unacceptable. So right now, what we're going to do now, we're going to go to the next section here. Uh, we're going to bring in my, uh, my, my co-analyst here, Jacques, the lockdown corner, he's going to give his breakdown on the show. After that as well, uh, we're going to also talk about what are you doing and the hawk side. We see you. We see you. All right. Jacques, Hawk, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Doing yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. Before I want to introduce myself, man, I'm Jacques, the lockdown corner. I'm a little history about myself. I've been playing, playing football for about 10, 11 years, so I understand the position. DB, of course, like my brother Hawk is, so you already know. Um, and you would just want to give you an insight from people that's played the game before and then we can understand and, 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 and sympathize with the players and get it. The keys to the loss for the terrible loss that we had Sunday yep. was terrible. 
Offensive line, man, they got to block better. 11 sacks to Mario, that's unacceptable. Unacceptable. So you're telling me that you allow that defense, which I granted there's a good defense, to get to you 11 times. Now, Mariota holds the ball for five seconds, Hulk. Yep. Five seconds. Un unbelievable. Five seconds. You holding the ball that long. Yep. Come on now. Yep. Now, next step also, the run game. We can't get the run game going. We got the coaching staff. We got the pieces. We're trying to be like the Los Angeles Rams. No. We need a tie early. We don't have a tie early. We sure have a Derrick Henry and a Deion Lewis. We didn't run enough screens. That was what we brought Deion Lewis was in here before was to run screens. Absolutely. You follow what I'm saying? So, the keys to the loss of this, bad culture. One, didn't make any in-game adjustments. Thought we were going to come out in the second half, make those same adjustments that we made in the Philly game. We did. Second, offensive line has to block better. Has to block better. Got to get the run game going. And also, Mariota, man, you got to throw the ball. You got to throw the ball. This is your fourth year, man. You have to throw the ball. So that's just a little insight for me, yes, Dr. Sir. Lockdown Corner. Yes, sir. Question for Question for you, so yes. should we re-sign Mariota when it's time? Okay, a lot of Titans fans are going, I know we got a lot of Titans. Mariota sympathizing, that's what we got. And honestly, I would sign him to a one-year deal. Okay. A prove it deal. I agree. A Absolutely. Pro a prove, prove it deal, deal. because Mariota, the, the key to him is consistency. You have to be consistent, man. Yep. You have to be consistent. There's no consistency. The Agreed. key to the game is consistency. We put the pieces around you to be successful. Yes, sir. What's going on? What's going on? Huh? Agreed. Agreed. What's Agreed. going on? I totally agree with that. Before you sign him to a max contract, give him that one-year deal. Exactly. Say, look, man, prove it. And I think that's respectable. You it's know what respectful. I mean? To, to get him out there, give him an opportunity, see what he does. Because do I like Mario? I like him a lot. You exactly. know, very good guy, very good ball player. Um, but, you know, again, yes, consistency issues has been there for him. Exactly. So, you know, to make a franchise quarterback and say, hey, we're going to sign you to a long deal, we need to see a little bit more, right? Exactly. Now, we still have the season left, but we'll see how it goes. Exactly. But as of today, yes, I would need to at least see another exactly. year before we pay you match money. Exactly, exactly. And also, the keys to the game, too, how do you respond? Absolutely. Yes, Are sir. you going to respond? So when the Baltimore game, it came out, first possession, three and out. Yep. How do you respond off of that? Defense can't hold us that long. Yep. So offense, we got to get it together. How are we going to respond? That's the key. That's the, the phrase of the year. How do the Tennessee Titans respond at the end of the day? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Josh. I, no I problem, appreciate huh? that, sir. Thank you, sir. Right, you too. All right. So my two favorite sections of the show, the Hawks eye. Hawks eye. I see you. I see you. Okay. okay. So now a lot of times if I'm going to bring the Hawks eye, I want to see good things. During this game, I saw nothing. I didn't see anything good, to be honest with you. Zero, right? So, looking at the game, the only thing that I saw that was really good was Rashawn Evans. He had a heck of a game as a rookie. Uh, Adoree Jackson, who, I, in my opinion, is our best cover corner. One of the better young corners in the league. And Jarrell Casey. They had great games on defense. That's it. That's all I saw, right? Rashawn Evans, you keep doing that, man. You keep balling like you did, young guy. But for me, the thing that I saw the most... 11 sacks. 11 sacks. Hold on for a second. 11 sacks. How is that possible? High school football games don't even have 11 sacks. Pee wee football doesn't even have 11 sacks. That's unbelievable. What I saw, again, when you look at the stats, I saw a piss poor performance by our offensive line. Guys, you cannot allow the, the Ravens to come out there and sack you 11 times. It's inexcusable. So that's what I saw. I see you. I see you, offensive line. I see you, Jack Conklin. I see you, Taylor Lewan. I see you guys are being paid heavy and not really doing what you need to, especially you, Taylor Lewan. Let's go. Right? Let's do it. All right? Next section. Uh, what are you doing? All right. So to stay back onto the offensive line, Taylor Lewan and Jack Conklin, bro, you have 240-pound linebackers bulldozing you guys. That's inexcusable. You guys just allowed the whole stadium to go in and sack Marcus Mariota. Yes, Mariota can throw the football he, again, but 11 sacks, that's, that's un unbelievable. So, again, you guys are going to have to really step up and really do what you have to do. I don't know if you guys party last night. I don't know if you guys are just sad, but you guys played very poor. And to be rated as a top 10 offensive line in the league, can I be honest with you? We're not playing like it. And you guys know that we're actually playing like the bottom 10 of the league right now. And it's been like that all season. So that's the part of what are you doing? You guys need to be doing a better job. 
I don't speak French. Bonjour to the Tennessee Titans going to uh, London to play the uh, L.A. Chargers. Oh, boy. The Chargers. Every time the Titans play the Chargers, man, we lose. Man, just, just be honest. Do I think we can beat the Chargers? Can I be honest, please? No, we cannot, man. This is going to be a tough game for us. The Chargers just beat the Cleveland Browns 38-14. to The Cleveland Browns last week beat the Baltimore Ravens, right? Now, I'm not saying that 1 plus 2 equals 3. It doesn't always happen like that. But what I will tell you, this is a much better offensive team than the Baltimore Ravens, especially when it comes to running the football. You look at Melvin Gordon. He had, uh, he had 18 rushes yesterday for 132 yards and three touchdowns. The Chargers are number six overall in the NFL in rush offense. That doesn't bode well for us, given we're number 26 in rush defense. That doesn't mesh real well when you look at it. And when you look at us offensively, we're ranked number 30 in the NFL in total offense, and they're rated number 14 in total defense. So when you look at these numbers, they don't mesh very, very well. Now, do I think there's a possibility of us winning? Yes, I do. Because when you look at the Titans' overall defense, we are rated number eight in the NFL. Again, from a passing defense standpoint, rated number five in the league in pass defense. When you look at the, um, when you look at the Chargers overall, they're middle of the pack on, on a lot of stats. And for us, what I think that we need to do is, first, we're going to have to stop the run. We can't let Melvin Gordon, uh, Austin Eckler, who had uh, seven rushes for 60 yards, even the receiver, Keenan Allen, had four rushes for 41 yards. They were running all over Cleveland. And Cleveland has a very good run defense. But we're going to have to stop the run. If we don't stop the run, if we don't stop Melvin Gordon, we're going to get blown out. One thing Melvin Gordon can do, not only can he run, he can catch the football too. Melvin Gordon is extremely dynamic. We're going to have an issue with him, especially in the middle of the field. But we have to stop the run. If we do not, we're going to get blown out of London. Okay? They're going to be telling us, bonjour! Next, we have to pass the football. When you look at the Chargers' uh, pass defense, they are rated number 18 in pass defense. Now, we do have the Vanderbilt alum, Casey Hayward at corner. You know, he's a shutdown corner out there, no lie. Uh, but there's other guys. Uh, Trevor Williams, younger guy. Is he a shutdown corner? No. You do have Derwin James in safety, but the other safety, Jaleel Ladai, he's a tackling safety, not a cover safety. If you look at the film, he, he's very similar to Eric Weddle, though Eric Weddle's much better. He shoots down the field to make tackles. He's not really looking for the pass. So, again, the deep ball will be there for us, but we got to block up front. Now, their pass rushers are they're, they're pretty decent when you got Bosa out there at defensive end, right? But what we have to do, we have to make sure that we get the ball out and get them to our receivers. And uh, last of all, we got to sack Phillip Rivers. We got to get him to shake a little bit and throw some interceptions because Phillip Rivers has a time when you hit him a bit, he throws picks. But for some reason against the Titans, I don't know, maybe because we're very close to his hometown in Alabama. Phillip Rivers is unbelievable against us. I don't think we've ever lost, ever won to the Chargers. So we have to put pressure on Phillip Rivers. Can we do it? It's going to be very, very difficult because unlike us, Phillip Rivers gets the ball out of his hands. Downside Hutt is out of his hands. And you got Keenan Allen out there. You even have Tyrell Williams. Tyrell Williams had three catches last night for 118 yards and two touchdowns. So these guys are ready to play a receiver. We have to be ready as an organization. Do I think we're going to win? I honestly don't think so. Um, you know, we just do the best that we can do. You know, go to London. You know, you know, don't party too much, man. Stay focused on the game. And how do you respond as Jacques stated as well? We got to do that. So, uh, till next time, man, I just want to say thank you again for watching the podcast. Uh, you can subscribe to it as well, Tennessee Titans Weekly. You can also go to Twitter as well and go to at Titans Weekly 24-7. Uh, looking to open up an Apple podcast as well. I am on SoundCloud. Just type in Tennessee Titans Weekly. You can email me at Tennessee Titans Weekly at gmail.com. Bonjour. And hopefully we can beat the Chargers. And let's see what we do, man. Until next time. Yes, sir.